Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with one of the most popular topics here on the channel, dividend paying ETFs. Those beautiful little collections of stocks that not only lower your risk, but also put money in your pocket while you invest. It's what Warren Buffett would bring if he were Santa Claus. But these aren't just any kind of dividend funds. I'm using a special screener to find the dividend ETFs that put more money in your pocket than any other fund and they do it every single month. In this video, I'll reveal five monthly dividend ETFs that all yield over 10%. In fact, one gives you a 20% dividend yield. I'll also show you the screener I used and how to find more just like these. Stick around though, because towards the end of this video, I'll share four factors you need to watch for, four warning signs in these kinds of high dividend funds. We're getting started right now, but before we do, you know I've gotta send that special shout out to all you out there in the Bowtie Nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. I'll be using the ETF screener on StockCard to find these monthly dividend funds. I'll leave a link to StockCard in the video description below. Click through and then go to the portfolios in the top menu. You'll find the Bowtie Nation portfolio in the stock picks section. It's free to follow and you'll get email notifications whenever I buy or sell from the list. And as a special bonus, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for all you out there in the community Use the promo code Bowtie Nation, that's all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Now let's get to our list of dividend funds, and later I'll show you how I found these, as well as those four factors you need to watch for in these monthly dividend ETFs. Our first fund is the PIMCO Dynamic Income, ticker PDI, and it's 10.5% dividend yield. Now this is a closed in fund, which I'll explain what that means later and some of the risks, but Basically, this invests in bonds and other fixed income investments, then leverages that portfolio maybe two or three times higher. You can see here that it invests in bonds across mortgages, high yield credit, emerging markets, and even local municipal bonds. In fact, the fund holds over 2,000 bonds in its portfolio. Now, most of these are extremely safe investments, safer and less volatile than stocks, in fact. So what the fund manager does, they borrow two or three times the capital in the fund to invest in even more bonds. Now that's how these closed in funds can turn a bond portfolio that yields maybe all of three or 4% at the most into a dividend yield of 10% and higher by using that borrowed leverage. Of course, this kind of leverage and that strategy comes with higher expenses and the management fee on this fund is 2.8% seen here in the middle column on the bottom one of the highest you'll find in ETFs. Still though, because of that leverage, the fund has been able to produce an annual return of nearly 13% since inception. So it's one to check out, even if it's not my favorite of the five. The Aberdeen Income Credit Strategies Fund, ticker ACP, is similar to that PIMCO fund, but it pays a slightly higher 11.8% dividend. The fund invests in roughly 300 million in assets across short-term bonds and loans of companies in the US, UK, and throughout Europe, and in the non-investment grade credit ratings. Investments are spread across the sectors with a little bit more overweight in consumer discretionary, financials, and telecom services. Aberdeen leverages this portfolio of bonds to generate that 11% plus dividend yield and has produced a 12.6% annual return over the last five years. Now the expense ratio is also pretty high on this one, just under what we saw with PDI, but I do like this one for a little bit higher return. It's the last closed in fund on the list, but still one to consider. And we'll get back to our list of dividend funds, but I wanted to show you how to use this screener to find your own stocks. We'll go to tools in the menu and can screen here for individual stocks or ETFs. At first, I usually like to keep my search to only those funds with at least $50 million in assets. That's the point where most funds are profitable for the asset manager. So you've got a better chance of that fund being around for a while and not getting liquidated on low interest. You can also filter here for the investing style, a lot of these other factors, but I want to keep this one simple to keep our options open. So we'll just scroll down and toggle for ETFs that pay a dividend yield of more than 10% and those that pay a dividend every single month. Some of these other filters you can play around with include the country exposure and by sector. But again, keeping this one simple, we'll just click apply and you see that still leaves us with 13 monthly dividend funds to research for our list. Now back to our list, and this one is easily the most popular among income investors. The Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF, ticker QYLD, and it's 11.8% yield. The fund uses a covered call strategy on the NASDAQ 100 index. That's the 100 largest companies in that tech heavy NASDAQ. So what it's doing here, it's buying the 100 stocks in this index, mostly large technology companies, and then selling those call options against those. And the strategy here does something really interesting. It gives the fund exposure to those high return, high risk NASDAQ stocks, those fast growing tech stocks, but then lowers the risk a little bit. 
You see, by selling those call options, the other investor is taking some of that risk that those stock prices fall. So the fund not only generates cash, but it's also gonna be less volatile than just owning the NASDAQ 100 tech stocks outright. Looking at the stocks in the fund, it's a who's who of big tech companies with more than half a billion dollars in shares of Apple alone, along with Amazon and Microsoft, but if you scroll down here, you see not only that these some of these tech stocks, you've got some shares of Comcast and Pepsi as well because they're in that NASDAQ 100 index. Now, what you don't see here though, and you can see this on the fund holdings on its website though, is the covered call strategy. So what it's actually selling to offset some of that risk and generate cash. And digging into this, we see that the fund has sold call options expiring October 15th on the NASDAQ 100 fund worth about $351,000 and covering 3,200 shares. And this is interesting because it shows you exactly the strategy here. The fund currently holds about 320,000 shares of the stocks in that NASDAQ 100, but, but then it sells call options covering those about 1% a month. So it sold those call options for 3,200 shares on the index. Now that's generating some cash flow, though it doesn't limit the upside too much because it's only 1% of the fund. And this is one a lot of investors love, but understand like most of these high yield funds, most of your return here is going to be in that cash dividend. The objective here is for that income, not necessarily capital appreciation. So, so most of these are gonna use that strategy or a strategy to maximize that at the expense of price returns. Similar to that is the Global X Russell 2000 Covered Call ETF, ticker RYLD, and it's 11.1% dividend yield. And here, instead of holding tech stocks, the RYLD is holding shares of the companies in the Russell 2000 index, which are those smallest two thirds in the stock market. So the focus here is gonna be on that growth that you get from small cap stocks, but, but with the income generation through those covered calls. The RYLD uses that same covered call option strategy, but it does it in a very simplified way. Now here, instead of holding all the individual stocks in the index, like the QYLD did, uh, this fund just invests directly in a fund that holds all those stocks. And here we see that simplified approach, holding only the Vanguard Russell 2000 fund and then selling call options against that just like the QYLD. It sold one month of call options worth about 1% of the assets. So right now the market value of the shares held in that Vanguard ETF are around $484 million and the fund has sold call options at a 2230 strike price for $3.2 million, which is about seven tenths of a percent of the total fund value. So again, notice these funds aren't hedging the entire portfolio every month. They might have fund assets of say $100 million, but then are only selling calls against that worth 1 million. So generating about a 1% monthly income on the entire fund. And I like this one as a compliment to that QYLD because it gives you exposure to those small cap stocks, a different group compared to the big company tech stocks that you're gonna get in that NASDAQ ETF. The expense ratio here is only 0.6%, same as with the QYLD, so it's definitely a savings compared to those closed-in funds that we looked at first. We're coming up on our last monthly dividend ETF and the highest paying one on the list, but, but there are four things you need to watch for when picking funds to buy. Now first, you're gonna notice that a lot of those high-yield dividend funds are in CEFs, those closed-in funds. Now I'm not usually a fan of these because those fees tend to be above 1%, which is much higher than the ETF fees you'll find, but, but they can still provide good income, so I'm not gonna write them totally off the list. I did a full video on closed-in funds that I'll link to in the description below. Make sure you check that out if you're gonna be investing in these, but, but just make sure that you're gonna compare those expense ratios on any fund you buy. And the most obvious point you wanna check out is the fund's dividend history and its growth. Now, a lot of these high yield monthly payers are gonna be the type that pay out all their income as dividends every single month. So, so the payout is gonna fluctuate from month to month. I'd be ready for that, but still you wanna look for funds that are able to grow that dividend over time. One thing here that dividend investors always seem to forget, especially when looking at these high yield funds, is to check out that stock price history as well. Now I understand the idea here is to hold those stocks forever and keep collecting the dividend, but if you ever do need to sell, then it's just nice knowing that you can still get something out of those shares, that, that the stock price hasn't been totally destroyed and eaten up a lot of that dividend return that you collected. Now finally here, before I reveal that last fund, Look at the investment theme and ask yourself, is this a theme that's gonna be able to do well in the current economy? For example, on that previous NASDAQ covered call fund, it's gonna do well if tech stocks are flat or slightly rising, but, but will underperform the NASDAQ index if tech stocks really take off. It's also not gonna protect you too much from a tech stock crash. 
And the highest monthly dividend fund on the list, the Credit Suisse Crude Oil Shares Covered Call ETN, ticker USOI, pays a 21.3% yield. The strategy here is similar to those last two funds, except this one holds shares of the USO. That's the United States Oil Fund, which buys futures contracts on crude oil in a way to mimic the movement of oil prices in the market. Then the Credit Suisse fund sells those call options against that, generating that monthly income that can be paid out as a dividend. Now, of course, this one is going to do well when oil prices are rising. The fund sells those call options against its investment in the USO fund, but, but like we saw with the other two covered call strategies, it doesn't completely cover the investment every month. It might sell call options to cover a few percent of the assets, but, but if oil prices tick higher, then the US fund, USO fund is going to go higher as well, and it's going to take the USOI up with it. Now, the expense ratio on this fund is 0.85%, so higher than the two global X funds, but, but well under any closed-in fund you'll find. With oil prices likely to stay higher for at least the rest of the year, this one should continue to do well, and it's going to be a way to diversify that stock-based funds like the QYLD or the RYLD, adding a commodities-based fund tracking oil. Check out the 2021 portfolio on StockCard or click on the video to the right to see the highest paying dividend stocks in each sector. 11 of the highest yields you'll find right now. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell icon.